Hello and welcome back to Higher Maths, Graphs and Functions. We are looking at inverse functions. So we've just looked at composite functions. So now we're going to have a look at inverse functions. An inverse function reverses the effect of the original function. So you're already familiar with quite a few inverse functions. So for example, if you're adding 5, the inverse of adding 5 is subtracting 5. The inverse of multiplying by 7 is dividing by 7. The inverse of squaring is square rooting. So we're familiar with some ideas of inverse functions already. So here's the example I've got written down here. So for example, doubling a number can be reversed by halving the result. That is multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 are inverse functions. Right, the functions f and g are said to be inverses if f of g of x equals g of f of x, which equals x. So sometimes at the end of an exam question, you may calculate f of g of x, and the answer might come out as x. If that is the case, you may get a part c to that question that says, state the relationship between f and g, and you would just say f is the inverse of g. So let's have a look at this part. This means that when a number is worked through a function, then it's inverse f, the inverse of f, the result is the same as the input. So just taking these two here, they're inverses of each other, but say let's just pick 5. So 4 5s minus 1 is 19. And g of x, so I'd take the 19, I'd substitute it in, and I should get back to the 5. So 19 plus 1 is 20, divided by 4 is 5. So f of x does this, g of x undoes what you've done here. Let's try it for one more value. Let's pick 10. So 4 10s minus 1 is 39. 39 plus 1 is 40 divided by 4 gets us back to 10. So because g is undoing what f does, that makes g the inverse of f, and vice versa, f is the inverse of g. So to show that mathematically, we evaluate f of g of x. So that is f of x plus 1 all over 4. So again, guys, we're just replacing this x here with everything in the bracket. So 4 times something divided by 4 will just be that something. It'll just be x plus 1 minus 1, which equals x. And then g of f in a similar way, substituting in for x and working our way through. And we find out that that is also equal to x, which makes g the inverse of f.